Hi everyone, this is Bonnie Hunter and I want to welcome you to Quilt Cam Facebook Live, first time ever. Um, right now, I'm not even sure if this is running. I'm just looking at the blue screen or the blue light on my camera. And as soon as I refresh my, my page here, it should tell me um, if, if we're running or not. So I'm going to hit rewind here and see if it comes up and shows me that we are. Um, Facebook is a new thing for us. And yes, it says that we're live. So I'm, I guess we are, we are all systems go here. So this is my same setup. Only now I've got a, a laptop, an external webcam, a tablet, and a phone to monitor everything. The laptop is quite a ways away from where I'm sitting. So even though there are comments coming up on Facebook and there's hearts flying and there's, there's little thumb thumbs up and smiley faces and whatever, I can't read them from where you are. So when I do quilt cam, if you want me to share your quilt, if you want um, to have me share your story, or you wanna tell me what you're doing, tell me where you're from, I'd love to hear where you're from, what you're gonna to have to do is send me an email. My email address is quiltville at gmail.com. Now those emails will come into my phone and I will be able to um, read those closer to my face, which is what I need um, because I don't have supervision to see from far away. So uh, if you're new to Quilt Cam and you've never watched before, we've been doing Quilt Cam for years, but it's been embedded on my blog and it's been hosted on YouTube so that we have archives. And Google Hangouts was what we used to stream before, but it got pretty awkward because I would post that I'm doing a quilt cam on the blog and then folks in my open studio would gr group would say, well, where's the blog? Where do I get this? Where do I find quilt cam? I can't find it. Um, and then they'd end up with YouTube later down the road and, uh, and eventually find it. But I don't want to send people off site anymore. I want quilt cam to happen right here in Facebook, right where you're already connected. And then for the reruns, we can upload that to um, YouTube and embed that in the blog post. So the blog post that you saw coming through just a couple of minutes ago was a heads up for those who um, wanted to be watching. And then this, this video will be embedded in that post after the fact. So that's my thought for now. We'll see how that works. I figure if Google Hangouts is gonna change how they do things and make our life really complicated, then we're just gonna find a new way to do this. If you're new to quilt cam, it happens in my basement studio. Although I was thinking now that um, this is streaming off of my tablet. The tablet is more portable. It's running off of Wi-Fi, and who knows where in my house I may run this. Who knows where from my back porch or something I might end up running this. So we can really have some fun now that Quilt Cam is mobile because it's coming from a mobile device. Um, I did have to use some special software and a and a doohickey connector to get the external camera to connect into the small USB port on the on the tablet. But the picture looks pretty great and and i'm really thrilled so what i'm working on today and and really what what quilt cam is is not a tutorial it's not a, a lesson that i'm going to give you but there will be some hints and helps and tips and tricks that we go through along the way but this is me sharing my own home sewing time with you this is me working on stuff that i want to work on not teaching a class. So it's pure pleasure to feel like I get to sew with friends as well as, as you get to sew with friends, whether we're connected through the internet, whether you have a friend sewing with you while you're watching this. I got one email from a gal that said that she big screens it <laughs> onto her big TV. And I thought, oh, that's larger than life. I'm not sure if I really want to, to be that big. But this is what this is. So what I am working on and I showed a little bit about these yesterday. I am working on these little pumpkins, no faces on these. These are just pumpkins that I'm working on. I'm gonna do a table runner with the black ones because it's gonna be very, very Halloween-y and I want that just out for Halloween. And then the gray ones, I want to become a lap quilt, just lap quilt size. We don't want a big bed size quilt with pumpkins all over it. That's not gonna be out all year long. But um, even though this is for a future book project down the road, it's 
it's extra fun for me to work on it during the season that it represents. So I want to make pumpkins over the next few weeks. And if I'm doing it with gray backgrounds, it's okay if we're heading towards Thanksgiving, right? So some will be gray, some will be black. Um, we won't know how they're going to be set yet. There's no pattern available, but there's a lot of pumpkin patterns out there. Um, so I'm sure that you can find one if you feel pumpkin inspired. What I want to do, um, I've, I've, always been working with leaders and enders through my um, sewing, uh, I guess, sewing career, sewing life. And this is no different. If I'm working on one block at a time, these do have little stitch and flip corners on them. These little seams are short, and yet I want to keep kind of um, cohesive with what I'm working on. So I tend to work on two blocks at once, using each block as the leader ender for another. So I'll go on one block as far as I can go, and when I can't go any further and it's time to bring that block out from the machine, I'll just sew one stitch and flip corner on block number two. And then I can remove block number one from behind, bring it forward, do what I can with that, and then sew another corner on block number two. So it keeps my piecing continuous and I don't have to have a chain of 79 blocks all in the same stage of progression. I like to work a little bit um, smaller. So my chain usually has an engine and a caboose. And sometimes the engine comes off and becomes the caboose and the caboose is the new engine, but they, they just chase each other's tails that way. So what I'm going to do here is set these done ones aside. I like to, you can see here that I'm working a little bit on, on this is a stem piece that's in the, in the machine. And the stem is a little bit improv because it has weird angles to it. So you can just make them all individual. But while that stem is there, I can take this one and I can do my little stitch and flip corner. Now this is a really small square. And if I were having trouble eyeballing this one, I would draw a line on it, but these are improv pumpkins, so I don't care if they are really um, symmetrical with each other. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this one. This machine has a knee lift, or not only knee lift, a knee control, which is um, fun for me to work with too, because I was having some hamstring problems and some um, calf problems with always having to use a gas pedal for my, for my machine. So the knee is keeping my leg in a more neutral position and it's really helped um, with the issues I've been having. So I'm just gonna sew one corner and we'll see how this works noise wise. It's a very quiet machine. I oiled it, oiled it up just the other day. All right, so then I can take my little stem piece if you've done Maverick Stars before, these stems will not be a, a shock to you. But what I do is take an extra strip of the gray, just whatever hunk a chunk of gray, and my stems are cut precisely. I can trim the extra gray to the shape of the base unit. Now, if I had a rotary mat here and a rotary cutter, I could have plopped that down and trimmed it, but I like to work with scissors. And then I'm gonna remove the extra seam allowance. So now here's my here's my stem piece just like this and remember we're going as far as we can so I can now grab the little side pieces for the stem and sew one of those on when I've sewn this on well I've gone as far as I can go but I can add another corner to the pumpkin itself so we'll sew this there's some improv sewing and there's some where a quarter inch seam is important and that's where my sticky seam guide really helps when i'm doing stitch and flip corners i don't have to move my sticky seam guide out of the way it's low enough profile that those corners can just ride on the top of it so if you want information on that you'll find that um, this, the seam guide stuff under i think it's called best seam guide ever at the top of the tips and techniques tab at the top of the blog Okay, so these are kind of improv pumpkins, so I am just trimming that corner. I do a lot with scissors, three corners on. I can't go any further with this piece, so now I can add corner number four. And then we're gonna check for some messages from you. Remember that I can't see any of your comments on Facebook right now. It's The laptop is too far away so that we have this view of me sitting at my uh, table, so I won't be looking at those. 
until after. And this is funny. I woke up this morning. We did our first little test, just a live off the cuff test yesterday. This morning I woke up to check it and there were over a thousand comments. And there's no way in Quilt Cam we can read, uh, especially out loud, a thousand comments. So that's where sending me an email is going to really be beneficial to everybody. Those comments were scrolling up the screen so fast. You couldn't even land on one to read it. So, alrighty. So here we have our pumpkin stem with one background piece added and then the next one will go on. Okay, ready? I'm checking email. I turned this down so that there was no sound coming from anything. And let's see how we're doing here. So here's one from Kim Heger who says, so glad to see that the new way to do quilt cam is working beautifully. Hi Kim, how are you today? She says, it's neat that the viewer can see the total number of people viewing at any given time. I didn't think about that. That's really a neat feature. Now when we move this over to YouTube, after the fact, um, I, I grab the video off of Facebook, save it to my computer, upload it to YouTube. None of the comments that are on happening on um, Facebook right now will transfer over. So all that information will be lost. So that's another good reason to send me an email so that I can read your comment on the air. She says, I've been working on your Texas braids pattern since taking your Wichita, Kansas workshop in April. I've made a queen size for my sister for Christmas, two lap size quilts for my parents, and I'm starting a lap size for my brother-in-law. It'll be Texas braids, quilty Christmas. That sounds just perfect. I love stuff like that where the repetition of the pattern and the variety of the fabrics in the quilt are the big statement. So it doesn't have to be a really difficult pattern to give a whole lot of pow. It's, it's what you put into it and how the pattern repeats. And the more repeats, the better. So Texas Braid is found in um, my book, Adventures with Leaders and Enders. You can make the quilt any size that you want. And the rectangles that go into that are two inches by five, I believe, and the cornerstones are two inches. So it's perfect for scrap busting from your two inch strips. So glad that you could tune in, Kim. All righty, let's see who's in here. This is almost like it used to be, but it's a little bit different. I've got three screens going here. Okay, so this is from Mary Carol, from Carol, who says, watching live for the second time from the UK, but usually watch the recorded quilt cams on YouTube. Have got your new book and loving it. Want to make every quilt in there, but it may take some time to collect enough scraps. And that's just the thing. There are a lot of quilters out there who don't deal with scraps. I was talking to another quilt friend the other day who said she has a friend who she can't handle scraps. It's just too much chaos for her. And she will throw away anything less than a fat quarter. She just can't can't be dealt with. So the friend uh, said, here's, here's a box. Just put the stuff in here for me. And when the box is full, I remember who? It's Karen. Hi, Karen. Lieberman, are you out there? Karen Lieberman? This is, I'm telling your story. Um, so at the end of however long a period, the one quilty friend says, here, here it is. And it's a treasure for those of us who love to work with scraps. So if you are one that doesn't like to work with scraps, just have a second box or a second, even a trash can with a liner or, or whatever it is, and put those precious bits aside for a friend who loves scraps. My smallest piece, three-fourths of an inch by eh, to be a string. And that's what's in here. There's some pieces that are, you know, three-fourths of an inch, like this one right here, okay? All the way up to however wide. If you're new at organizing your scraps, and basically the chaos goes away once you start tackling your scraps as soon as you have them, inch and a half strips, two inch strips, two and a half inch strips, three and a half inch strips, those are the core four for my scrap user system. And then there's things like strings and crumbs and, and other parts that are always fun to work with. So if you're not a scrap user, you got par partial jelly roll strips left over, little hunks and chunks, don't toss it. Find somebody who will love you forever for donating it. And don't feel any bad, you know, don't feel any worse about giving it away. You don't have to create with that if that's not your thing. But the gift that you are giving to somebody who loves scraps, like I said, they'll, they'll just love you forever. So I'm so glad that you could tune in. Carol, she also says, um, love Wild and Goosey, and I'm attaching a photo of the progress so far. You inspire me to try something out of my comfort zone. So she has a photo here. See if I can turn this sideways and hold it up to the camera. 
Oh, I love it. She's even got her yellow sashings going on in there. So I'm, I'm looking at my tablet to make sure that we're showing up here. So you can see that she's got her blocks going on and her sashings are filling in, the yellow and the scrappy. The pattern for this version of Wild and Goosey is in my new book, Addicted to Scraps. If you found the Wild and Goosey block in my Addicted to Scraps column with Quiltmaker Magazine, it didn't have the sashings included. But maybe you've got a bunch of blocks already made, and maybe you'd like to set it this way. Come on, baby. Go back light. Oh, I lost the whole thing. Hang on. We knew it would be a snafu. The light doesn't stay on long enough. But if you decide you want to set it this way, the pattern for the paper pieced wild and goosey block and the paper piece sashing are included in the book. All right, let's try one more here. Here's Jill who says, working on bricks and stepping stones while you work on your cute pumpkins, my quilt will go to a local nursing home. Oh, thank you. That is so wonderful. I was, in fact, talking to my mom last night. She says, well, what are you... What are you going to do with all of the stuff that you have? You've got all the stuff. I said, Mom, I can't wait to retire so I can go back to making charity quilts and really give them to people who love them. So my, my heart goes out to you. For those who are making the, the quilts and giving them to other, other people, that's where, where um, the core of quilting is for me. I love that. Thank you, Jill. And she sent a picture also. She's working in blues and browns, and it looks really yummy on the phone right there. I think maybe it goes better this way. Yeah. Sometimes phones don't, or photos don't like to turn right side up. That's really pretty, Jill. So glad you could join us. Alrighty. So let's put this pumpkin almost to bed. So I'm going to add the second background piece right here. Now this piece can come off. And I do like to fold these corners up to make sure that they match all the way. When I am sewing and eyeballing without drawing a line, I have to remind myself not to sew directly corner to corner. I need to be a little bit into the seam allowance so that this corner will fold over all the way. And it does. So then I can trim it out. And I just eyeball that too. All of these little things, these are, these are too small to save. These are even too small for a pineapple um, crazy. So they're going right into trash bag underneath there. Now I can sew a bottom to this block and then this is as far as I can go with this one pumpkin so then it's time to pull another pumpkin forward. All right so here's this piece. You see how that little stem is in there, all improv. The angle is can be any weird angle. Some can lean to the left, some can lean to the right. You can make them sh tall and spiky or short and squat or whatever. So I love a little bit of improv piecing in my pumpkin. We're gonna grab this next one. It was really fun. Did I have a, yes, I have some little stems. Really fun to go through the gifted gray fabrics that came after our Ali Atari um, mystery release. You know, when I asked for, I just want some gray strings. I want to make a gray string quilt. And people sent two and a half inch strips. Well, honey, those are too big to be strings. <laughs> and I saved some. So we're going to put them in these pumpkins. And I think they're awfully cute. All right. So this one's going to get, I think, which way did that one lean? We're going to lean this one the other way. If that one leaned that way, this one will lean this way. Okay. And then this can come off. The crazy thing is, is yes, I talk this way to myself even when I'm not on camera. Just to keep things straight. Like this, this order gets a deck of playing cards. This order gets two decks of playing cards. And if I say it out loud, then it sticks in my brain. Okay, that pumpkin's now done. Something you probably can't tell. It's really hot here in the studio. I had the air conditioner running a little bit ago, but I turned it off because it made too much noise. We'll just we'll just call this a, a, a midlife uh, whew, moment. Personal summer extended. And I think the excitement of being on camera has me a little bit overheated okay so here's this little stem 
you know, working with scissors is really fun. Not everything has to be done with rotary cutter, and I kind of like just free trimming. Remember how fun this was in first grade with construction paper? It's still just as fun with fabric. Okay, and then corners. Remember to go just a tiny, tiny bit shy into the seam allowance. And then here's this one. I'd love to know what you're working on today. Or if you're in Facebook, are you just <laughs> watching what's going on here? Remember, we're supposed to be sewing together. So maybe you're working on a binding. Maybe you're just pressing fabric. Maybe I'm on your, on your phone while you are out and about somewhere. I'd love to know what you're doing and what you're doing for your Quilty Sunday. So here we go. There's a one more for the, for the pumpkin patch pile. Okay, and, and pardon this because talking a lot really gives you a dry whistle, so it's time to wet one. LaCroix, lemon lime favorite. I gave up Cokes and Diet Dr. Peppers and stuff like that, but sometimes you still got to have a little bit of cold and fizz, and so fizzy flavored fizzy water with no added sweeteners, no fake sweeteners, no nothing, just water flavor suits the bill okay so we're going to check in see who's coming in here all righty oh you guys this is wonderful how fun jill churchill hi jill she says looks great from erie i'm working on some improv piecing this afternoon who knows what i'll end up with thanks for sharing with us and that's jilly from erie and then this one is from Katie who says double feathered star finishing my double feathered star today and she sent a photo and I am like oh my oh my this is gorgeous I'm going to biggie size it just a little bit so I can show you what she's working on look at that look at that purple and green and black how can you how can you not go right with that that is so beautiful so she's finishing it up today that those pieces are so stinking tiny that's gorgeous Great job. I love it. And I would love to know um, when you email me where you're from. If you could just include where you're from. I think we like to know how far away people are and who's all tuning in all at once. So this one is from Candy Mitten. Hello, Candy. How are you? She says, Happy, happily sewing with you today, but can't help but get excited that mystery time is getting closer. Thanks for all that you do. And that that's Candy. Uh, Candy. She says, with faith, you can move mountains. And I, I, I agree. With faith and with family, you, you can move mountains. And I really have to give a, a huge shout out to my hubby who has been my, my biggest cheerleader over the past week. You know, I got home from a cruise just last Saturday. So just, just, just a week ago, we hit the ground running on Sunday morning. Um, and we have been filling book orders all week long. He left Monday for a trip, a business trip to Boston. And he got in um, Friday about noon and he spent all day yesterday and all morning today with me, helping me get stuff up. He's um, ran me twice to Best Buy when I said, I need a tablet. And then the next day it was, the, next day it was, the tablet's backwards. I need a connector. I need this. I need a that. And, and, and he's so patient. And, and off, off we go to, to find what I need so that we can do this, this quilt camp thing. And uh, so with faith, you can move mountains. But it's a lot better with family. So thanks for tuning in, Candy, on the mystery Let's bring up that subject. Um, questions have come in. Do we need the essential triangle tool for the mystery? Need? No. Suggested? Would be nice. In fact, I've got one on my ironing board. Can I can I grab it so I can show you? This is like a really unprofessional. Let me grab something. Just a second. I told you it wasn't far. Okay. So this is the essential triangle tool and you can see that it's not mirror image in the camera hooray now there are um many 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 specialty rulers on the market and many of them can be used to do the same jobs that this one does um the reason why i did this ruler set was because this is the way that I work. And my publisher said, you've been working with these, this brand or this brand or that brand for years. 
take what you like, add what they don't include, take away what you don't like, and, and make it your own, make it your own brand. So I was really nervous about doing this because I've been promoting other people's um, tools for a long, long time. But the more I thought about it, the, the, the better it seemed because the number one thing that I didn't like about the other ones was the lack of information on how to use them. So if I open this package, I want you to see that, okay, so you've got, you've got the, the ruler here that's got markings in two colors. The red ones are for half square triangles. The, the greeny kind of aqua color is for quarter square triangles. And then you've got your bonus buddy ruler up here. But the back of the pattern also shows you how to cut. This is your quarter square triangles back here and how to use the bonus buddy, the holes in the bonus buddy to set your seam allowance. These are the things that I find most important for units to come out the right size is you have to know where to place the ruler on the fabric. You have to cut it correctly and then that all important seam allowance needs to give you the unit size that's required for the pattern. So it, it's not the width of your seam allowance that is, is, is always the most important. If that seam allowance is perfect, but the fold of your fabric, because your fabric is thick or your thread is thick, gives you a unit that's too small, then it's not the right seam allowance. And that's what the holes in the bonus buddy are gonna help you do. It, this is the same little holes that are in my little green seam guide that, that I still still carry. Okay, but when you open this up, do you see, this is this is cardstock. This is something that you keep. In fact, I've had some people tell me they wanna get it laminated and, and hang it in their, in their sewing studio and that just, just thrills me. But it's heavy cardstock and it will take you from half square triangles to quarter square triangles to flying geese and all the stitch and flip um, hints, helps, and techniques to get those units to turn out right by not sewing on the true diagonal and what you can do with the, with the, with the bonus unit. So this is all comprehensive in here. Um, one of the things that people have commented the most on my patterns and, and the mysteries especially, because this is, this is going towards the mystery, is that the, the, the mysteries are not just a pattern, they're a teaching tool. And I show you how to do everything step by step. So it's like a workshop or a course, not just here's a pattern, make this and, and, and do it. I have included as much information on the inside of this tool set as I do for the mysteries or my patterns. So it's not just a ruler, here you go, be done with it. This is what I hope will become your right and your left hand for every project that you make in the future. It even shows you a little chart on what sizes of strips to cut from when doing different um, items. Now, one of the things that I changed up on this that I felt was really, really important when I was using two rulers before, we had um, the easy angle ruler was marked in unfinished size. But then if you're doing flying geese with the companion angle ruler and you're cutting with two different rulers, well, one is marked in unfinished size, the other one's marked in finished size, and you're trying to combine these two things together. And I watch my students. I watch my students and I learn by where they are struggling on how to improve things to make things better and easier down the way. So this whole thing, half square triangles, quarter square triangles, flying geese, Everything is marked in finished size because that's how I think. I look at a block and I say, oh, that's an evening star. Okay, that flying geese finishes at, at two by four. Or that, that's a birds in the air and that half square triangle finishes at three inches square. The seam allowance for me comes after to add it to the finished size so that I get it back down to unit size. So that's why we have marked the um, essential triangle tool in finished size only, not in unfinished size. Because when people say, well, that flying geese is supposed to measure two inches by, by four inches, and they, the, the ruler says, well, it's gonna be four and a half by, by two and a half, and then they trim it down to two by four and realize that, oops, I just trimmed off my seam allowance. Believe me, it happens. So this is gonna be a good thing. Now back to the mystery. Colors, yardage requirements, background information, 
all of that stuff is going to come out by the end of the month and we're halfway through the month so we're just a couple of weeks away from having all of that go wild you already know that the essential triangle tool is back ordered on amazon till february i'm getting uh, another shipment of 500 in within the next couple of weeks i have another shipment of 5000 coming in um, probably by mid-December. It takes two months <laughs> to have these manufactured because there's two manufacturers, one for the tools and then one for printed printing and, pa and packaging. So can you use the other rulers to do the same thing? Absolutely. These are basic shapes. So if you've participated with me in previous mysteries, and you have those tools you can use those and i will be giving you the finished size of each unit so that you can use whichever technique you want to give you these units with a technique that fits you i always think that quilt patterns are like a recipe and how you get there is is your business and once this quilt is hanging on your wall or on your bed, is anybody going to know that you used this method or that method or this tool or whatever? But my mystery this year will be using the essential triangle tool, just as I said, as a teaching um, format so that people who have this in the future will know how to use these and where they can use them elsewhere in their in their quilting life. So remember, I'm not just putting up a free quilt pattern. This is a, a, a whole course on how to make these units and how to put them together, and I will be teaching with these tools. Okay, so I'll set this aside. Now that was kind of long-winded, but I hope that you're as excited as I am about this year's mystery. The top's done, it's quilted, it's waiting for binding. <laughs> So I'm a little bit ahead of the game and I'm feeling kind of chuffed about it, but um, I'm really excited about this year's mystery. So when does it go live? First clue is the fourth Friday in November. So for those outside of the U.S., it's the 25th of November. We'll go clue number one. And then every Friday thereafter until completion, you will come to the blog and get another clue. And I think you're going to be just blown away by um, this quilt and I look forward to seeing what you do with it whether you stick with my colors or you come up with your own and I love it when you come up with your own I have seen so many beautiful quilts that have just blown me away by the colors that you put together and uh, that just excites me that really touches my heart okay I want to sew something so when the hubby says well how much sewing did you get done during quilt cam dear well not much really <laughs> But that's not the point. We're here together. We're here together, and that's golden. Okay, so I've got one corner sewn on. I've got my little stem made, so I can add one side to the stem here. So this is my thought on stitch and flip corners. If you have trouble getting that corner to fold over all the way, it's okay to take the time to draw a line so that you can sew right next to it into the seam allowance. You don't want to draw a line and sew on it because your fabric won't fold over all the way. And I am just eyeballing a little bit shy because these are kind of improv -y anyway. And I just trim it and toss it into my trash can. So when I put my unit underneath the needle, I actually set the needle just next to the point of the square. And then I aim to come out just next to the point of the square into the seam allowance so that I know I'm a little bit short. And I only eyeball when I am not saving my bonus triangle. I'm loving these. always do this always fold that up and make sure that it reaches the outside edge before you trim everything away now these string blocks are kind of bulky so in the old way somebody would have said well yeah it doesn't reach all the way so just trim out the middle layer and leave the background there but that's going to leave me pieces with seams in them so I want those gone so I would rather be sure that things reach all the way 
So there's two corners on. And when I've gone as far as I can with this block, that's when I start sewing on the next one and then just let them chase back and forth. Okay. Now this one I know is going to get a piece on the top instead of on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that there. Those of you who've never watched Quilt Cam before who are with me for the first time, you might notice I don't do a lot of iron pressing. Not when I'm at the machine. I do a lot of finger pressing, but when the block is complete, then I'll press the whole thing. I call this get real quilting. <laughs> it can't be perfect all the time, but we've got three corners on now. Looking pretty good so far. You'll notice in these fabrics that they're not all just orange orange. So here's one that, that has kind of a sister's choice patchwork design on it. Then there's one that's kind of a cheddar yellow with pink dots. This piece has three pieces in it. Can you see there's an extra piece in here? I let no pieces that are big enough go to the trash can. So I will actually sew small pieces together into one long strip and use that as a, as a um, string in one piece. See, here's a 30s. This is a 1930s orange next to this whatever bright orange. And here's a yellow that had these printed cats on it in pink and blue and, and, and orange and whatever. So it just has to kind of have those autumn colors in there. I don't want all of these strings to be orange, 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 all the same dye lot. I want to be able to see each string next to the one it's next to. So... And there's that corner. Boy, my, my watch buzzes every time an email comes in. I feel like my hand's gone numb. It's buzzing so much. That's really fun. Okay, so here is the top portion of this pumpkin. I've got four corners sewn on here. I can't go anymore. So at this point, I pull the next pumpkin forward. Here's my stem, and here's the piece that I want to sew. I'm going to actually make this really short and squatty little stem. The key with going improv for improv piecing or crumb piecing or whatever it is, is that you don't want all your blocks to look the same. So I try to change the layout of where this piece hits that one. And now that the stem is under the presser foot, I'll fold this out, so four corners are on. Now I can add the pumpkin top and this one has the rectangle at the top so it'll float above the others now that is a cat <laughs> that's the bottom of a cat and a tail so i'm going to make sure that the cat's not upside down that's selective um non-improv there you can put the orientation how you want okay so on these improv ones i have to fold and you know what? That's not going to work. Maybe it will. It will. It will work. I missed it a little bit. Missed the corner, but it's within the seam allowance, so I will be fine. I just trim it to shape and then get the excess out of there. Boy, does that feel good to be cutting. Okay. So that's as far as that goes, this one. I'm just gonna get this pumpkin block out and then we're gonna look for some more email. So Hubby asked, well, how long will YouTube keep you, or Facebook keep you going on this? And I think that a Facebook Live can go for 90 minutes. And we've been going, what, 40 minutes? Yeah, so we're good. We're good for a little bit yet. But the possibilities are endless as now that this is working on a mobile app and the Wi-Fi is strong enough, we can, we can move this around. We, we can do quilt cam at the dining room table for book fulfillment. <laughs> we can do that. All righty. So here's this uppy one. This one has the, the background at the top. Here's the one that we did just finished a little bit ago. So you can see how these guys are going to dance up and down across the row. And then I'm, I'm thinking of doing this as, a, as maybe as a row quilt with something else in between the rows. I don't know. I'm just going this far and then I'll decide what I want to do. Okay. Back to the email, which is, there's like 53 
Okay, so I'm going to go all the way to the top, and if I missed you, I will read back through them later. Mary C. says, FB Quill Cam, I have to send you an email this morning. I'm your biggest fan in Southeast Washington State. That's so nice to know. Thank you. I had the best time finding Quiltville quilts at the Spokane Quilt Show. I got your email saying my order to for the new Addicted to Scraps and Essential Tool were shipped. Couldn't contain my joy. Did a happy dance right there in line. Getting ready to go to church, so no stitching for me today. Quilts are always on my mind, though. Wander waiting for the color cards later this month. Here's a picture of my Aliatare. It was raining, but I had to get an outdoor picture. So let me see if I can biggie size this just a little bit so you can see her Aliatare. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. I get even more excited that you are so excited, and it makes it so worthwhile. And uh, just remember, this is this will be an early heads up that um, you know the mystery is free to participate, and the reveal will happen in January. But by February 1st, you need to have printed all of your clues and set them aside. The best thing to do is to print them, put them in page protectors in a binder, and save it. Remember, it's going to take a lot of paper, but this is a teaching workshop. It's not just here's your little little pattern in a Ziploc bag. This is a, a full tutorial um, for, for this quilt. So you can um, slim it down if you want to. I know some people will um, take the, the, the blog post itself and copy and paste that into a Word document and only save the parts that they want. So that's an idea for you if you want to make it less papery. But for those who complain about how many pages it takes to print this out, remember it's a full course. And, and uh, paper is cheap. Ink is cheap. A full workshop in person, not so cheap. So glad that um, you are willing to do that and to participate with us. Have a great day, Mary. Thanks for sharing your photo. Julia from Bath, UK. She says, no sewing happening yet. I'm attempting to thread up a new serger, uh, overlocker, as they call them in the UK. I caught up with Dawn last week at the Stitching and Knitting Show in London and will be getting together with her again next weekend. Please say hello to Brenda just in case she's watching. So Miss Brenda Middleton, if you're out there, we need to do a, a little foursome somewhere in this world again because we had the most fun when we were on our England trip and met up with Julia and with Dawn in Bath for dinner. It was so fun. And it, it's fun to be friends since then, too. Um, she says, so good to see Quilt Cam live for once. I love it. I'm loving this. Um, I, I think this is going to just be the way that we go from now on because Facebook is easy. Steve says, this is my mystery quilt from last year. Love it. Had the background waiting for inspiration. Bought it in France last October when you came out with Aliatare. I knew these fabrics would be part of it somehow. Oh, and this is Carol from Cartersville, Georgia. So her email is Steve and Carol. That's what showed up at the top. And she's got hers here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't know if you can see the quilting texture on that. I'm trying to hold it up to the camera to, to let you see the quilting texture. That is absolutely beautiful. And I know we love to stash fabrics. And I never feel guilty about stashing fabrics. Because if you stash the fabrics, the quilt will come. That one fabric that you thought, I, well, when am I ever going to use this? When am I ever going to use this. You will find the perfect spot where no other fabric would have done near as well. Thank you, Carol, for sharing that. And then more coming in. Susan says, so happy. I loved it, that subject line. So happy, exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. She says, she shared a OneDrive file with you. Uh, to view it, click the link below. I've been missing you, but enjoyed hearing about your travels too. I'm working on hand quilting a baby quilt for my granddaughter to be born next month. The picture is just the flimsy ready to sandwich. So if I click this, will it open or will my phone blow up? <laughs> there is some spammy kind of stuff that is coming into my inbox that, that at first glance, it's like, Share to OneDrive file with you or click here to view. It's like, uh, uh, no. But this one, I know this one. Ooh, I like, I like, I like. It's like a double hourglass quilt there. And that's what she's working on for a baby quilt. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, that's lovely. Love it. Okay. Lois March says, what I am working on. Really glad to catch you again live. Just bought your new book Friday from my local shop, Busy Lady in Mount Washington, Kentucky. So here's a big shout out for Busy Lady. Thank you so much for carrying my book. 
She says, um, while at the one stop shop hop, it was fun. I am working as I listen to my grandmother's listen on my grandmother's flower garden. It's made with half inch hexes and she's ooh, that is gorgeous. There you go, hexy lovers. Isn't that just beautiful? She's starting in the center and you can tell where she's at the upper part there at the very, very top where she's working to attach that unit, that section right there, working it in rounds. I love that. That's gorgeous. And I love yellow and green and kind of a strawberry red together. That is just so fresh. Sharon Perry. Hi, Sharon Perry. She says Y-E-A-H on hers. No picture, but I'm working on my guild's block of the month for October for the meeting this Wednesday. I also have to put together the steps for a demo on Wednesday, too. Girl, you are busy. And I really have to thank Sharon. If you saw this morning's blog post, um, the the beautiful quilt, well, it's kind of hanging behind me, but you can't see it from this camera view. Um it's an endless chain variation and it's 1940s and 50s fabrics and it's just it's wonderful i'm just over the moon so thanks again sharon but you're busy 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 she says i still haven't figured out what i'm going to demo for the demo on wednesday Uh oh better get busy or get busier thanks sharon thanks for coming and checking in monique says no sewing here today <laughs> sounds like there's a lot of no sewing going on in facebook land um packing for a sewing retreat i'll be in santa cruz sewing by the sea all week love watching on facebook have a wonderful rest of your day and that's monique in california i think that that santa cruz has to be one of the most beautiful areas um in california it's not as overrun as as la is and uh, i was lucky enough to grow up in san jose so santa cruz was right over the hill in fact on, on Friday afternoons in high school, we had we had open campus when I was in high school. And as, as I look back at this now, I am completely astounded that we had, of course, we thought we were so big and grown up, you know, in, in high school. Not only was it open campus where you could come and go, we had a designated smoking section. And, and I remember kids going over there all the time to just smoke in between classes during their break. Boy, have we come a long way, baby. I'm so glad it's not that way anymore. But but needless to say, Friday afternoons, the school was down to about half population because everybody would pile into the back of the pickup trucks with the surfboards and over the hill we'd go to Santa Cruz. That's fun memories. Okay, one corner on. Press. Another side on. Directional fabrics are always a challenge. Does the corner match? Yep, so I can trim. And I'm not trimming an exact quarter inch. Sometimes it tapers and leans and whatever, but it's sufficient to hold the fabric together. Sometimes on really small pieces, I like to trim less than a quarter of an inch just to eliminate some bulk. So do you have Halloween decor up in your house? I've watched lots of posts. We'll do this one from the top too, since I can. <laughs> These units are some going one way, some going the other. It's a directional fabric. We're directionally challenged. We don't care. I used to decorate for Halloween outside when the kids were little. And I love doing that with, with lighted pumpkins and bays of hail and stalks of corn and scarecrows and whatever. Since we moved here, not so much. I'm in a really kind of a weird neighborhood and my house is way down a long driveway that's kind of down a hill. Nobody would see stuff and I'm not here to enjoy it. So I kind of miss that. Maybe by the time that grandkids come around, we'll do it again. But I do have a couple of autumn quilts that I pull out. Um, one Halloween one that's a, that's a string spider wood. No, it's not a string spider web. Sorry, it's a kaleidoscope. And then one that's autumn leaves that I like. And I made that in 1990-something, so 
you know, you still keep pulling it out. You look at those fabrics and they're kind of faded and whatever, but it's lived on my dining room table from the 1st of September through Thanksgiving for the last oh, almost 20 years. And we still love it. One pumpkin top to go. Okay, and that's as far as I've gone on that pumpkin. So let's check for some more emails. Marcy Reynolds said got kicked off. She was kicked off. I don't think it's happened to anybody else. I am watching it on, on my Facebook right now. So all you really need to do if you get kicked off is um, just restart your Facebook and come back to the page. I, I, I have no control over what people's connections are, whether you're on your, a really good Wi-Fi signal or whether you're using your data to watch this. So that kind of a thing I have no control over. But I figure that I, I've got it live here on the, the tablet and I've got my five second delay playing in front of me and I can still see it, then it's gotta still be going. Okay, Johnny Stagg says, working on my salvage edge strips, I use these to make comfort quilts. The last one I made had all of her loved ones signatures on it. It was a comfort to the family. As they said, she was never alone. All the love was in the quilt. Isn't that beautiful? All the love was in the quilt. So she's got a photo here. Oh, I love it. Now if I turn this sideways, does it, oh, good, good. So she's got, she's showing what she's doing here and you can see that she's got quilt cam going on in the background. So she's working on her salvage strips right there. Beautiful job. Thanks for tuning in. I love it. The new, new generation of quilt gam. Facebook Live. Gerald, or I should say Diana Leffman says, enjoying quilt cam today. I'm working on binding my turkey place mats today. So she's thinking ahead for her um, Thanksgiving. How far ahead do you plan on, on that sewing project? I still can't make myself pull out red and green for Christmas yet. I just can't. I can't even feel like sewing Christmas until about halfway through November. Then I might start, but right now I'm all about the fall colors and I'm happy, happily staying there. She says, working on a talking turkey quilt, but need to write you about my geese. I don't think they are all going to fly. <laughs> she said, your book should arrive this week. Thanks for all you do for us. So if your geese are not flying, uh, depends on, on which, which method that you're using. Um, check the size of, of the unit that's the, the sometimes the, the seam allowance is too small the units are, or seem too big the units end up too small they won't fit where they're supposed to go so go back to the unit size remember it's the unit size that matters not what your seam allowance is because there's there's too many things that have to come together to give us unit size how you cut the fabric how you sew the fabric what thread you're sewing with the thickness of the fabric how you sew it, it that's all part of what gives us unit size so try that diana and let me know how it goes okay so we've got here susan adler says quill cam yahoo Happy to be able to catch you live today from Cape Cod, Mass. She's in Centerville. I am working on Gypsy Wife by Jen Kingwell. It is a uh, call, being, call being offered at my local shop. I think she, she's probably doing auto, auto text. It's a quilt being offered at her local shop. I am looking forward to receiving your new book and ruler. I don't know my invoice number, so I can't tell if it's been shipped yet, but it will be here when it gets here, and I will be waiting, looking forward to the mystery. So that's great. Um, what I've been doing is every couple of days as one box full of 300 invoices is empty. I'm showing the numbers that are on that invoice box and you will know that that's where we are. The people who have those invoices that have gone out have all received an email that their, that their um, item has shipped. If you have not received a shipping notification, your item has not been shipped yet, but, and you'll be able to kind of gauge where you are. I appreciate not having 5,000 emails saying, what's my invoice number and has it shipped yet? So thank you. Um, here we are. Here is her, what was that called? <laughs> what was that called? Gypsy wife. I, I wanted to call it farmer's wife. I knew it wasn't that, but that is absolutely beautiful. Just lovely. Love the colors. So what you can do, um, some things that have had problems invoice-wise, Yahoo, Comcast, there's a couple of others too, where your, your receipts and everything have, have, your email address is correct in my system, but it's gone to your spam filter. 
So if you go to your spam filter and you type in Quiltville in the search bar, it may bring it up because it's likely buried a month down under there. Um, and if you really can't find it, you can, you, can let, you can let me know, but only if you need to let me know because, like I said, answering 2,000 emails just to give you your invoice number is really, really okay. Um, Rhea says, so glad you found a solution. Love to watch and sew with you again. Working on some shoe fly blocks, four and a half inches. Cute, cute, cute. Attached a picture of my happy place for tonight. Have fun. Know we all will around the globe. This is just like a worldwide bee. And she says, love from the Netherlands. And she's sewing here on her beautiful singer. Looks like a 15, model 15 there. And she's got quilt cam up on her um, computer right there. And that's where she's sewing in the Netherlands tonight, where the lights are already on because it's already dark outside. So glad to have you with us. Okay, let's do one more. And then I'm going to sew a little bit. We are almost an, an hour into to quilt cam. This is also a, a test as for how long the battery will run on the laptop, with, or not the laptop, on the tablet without it being plugged in because the camera is actually plugged into the um, charging port in the bottom. So, all right, I am gonna actually, oh, Pam Haina, your, your, your uh, subject line caught my attention because it said Halloween decor. She says, this is what I have been working on, even quilted the little quilts. Love you on Facebook. This is my friend Pam in Kentucky. Oh, Pam, that is adorable. That is so adorable. She's doing her own version of string pumpkins right there. And she's put a little center panel in the middle. I love that idea. I may steal your idea <laughs> because these black ones, these black ones don't have their tops or bottoms on yet, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. But that that is just uber cute. Whoops, going to go dark. There we go. Super, super cute. Love to see it, Pam. Great idea. That panel is really cute. Little quilty little witches holding up their little show and shares. Super. Okay. And this one is... Carol says, Friendship Cross. Loving quilt cam. Working on your Friendship Cross. No picture yet. But I'm loving it. Thanks for all you do for us. Looking forward to the mystery quilt. And Carol's in Arizona. Okay, one more because it says it has an attachment. This is from um, Barbel. She says, quilt cam on Facebook works fine in Germany. So hello, Germany. So glad you're with us tonight. I'm basting a quilt while watching quilt cam. I already have my Halloween quilt on the wall. And she says, yours from Barb. So she's got her Halloween decor out on the wall. Isn't that cool? Now I love that dark purpley blue that those, um, that's the night sky on this quilt. That's a color that has always intrigued me. I love that, that, what would you call that? It's not a blue violet. It's like, but it's like an electric royal blue. That is just beautiful. There's flying witches and ghosties and goblins and pumpkins. Very, very fun. Okay. So I am hoping that you have enjoyed Quilt Cam from wherever you are. Okay, so this is as far as I can go on this one. That's got, here's corner number three. So we now have to do this on here. Okay. Now we are going to sew this guy. I'm thinking tilting him the other way. And if I fold that up there, that's the key is do you have to watch it to make sure that when you fold it up, it's going to cover. Okay. I wish I could stay here and sew all day, but there's more stuff to do. But I'm happy for this just little bit amount of respite. As for the next quilt cam, I would love to do one. I am home until the 27th. The 27th, I fly to Houston. So maybe, I don't know if we can do it the 26th. Maybe the 25th. That would that would work. Um, because if I do an, a nighttime one, which I'd like to do, I'd like to do an evening one. And we may um, change the time of the evening one just a little bit. I'm thinking instead of doing 9 p.m., I would do 8 p.m. on Facebook my time so it doesn't go so late. I figure if we're changing everything, maybe we can change the time too. Um, 
when it gets winter time, it's just harder for me to do a live broadcast at nine o'clock in the evening, my time, but, but, but that's optional. We'll see. So that's what I'm thinking. So the, maybe the 25th would work good for everybody. I'm hoping so. And in the meantime, I hope that you're, that you'll follow along with, with what I'm posting. If you are not a member of my Quiltville's open studio page, and I just did something I really shouldn't have done. I, before I trimmed the, the, the background, I, I cut off what I was trimming too. So I'm going to just hold this here. We're kind of brain dead. I just need to trim this to size so that it'll fit. Okay. There. Open Studio is our group page on Facebook. So if you're just a member of my, you, you follow my quilt fill page. This is, this is on my main quilt fill page. This is where I post all my stuff. But if you want interaction with other quilters, type Quiltville in the search bar at the top of, of Facebook and you will find my group page. It's called Quiltville's Open Studio. And right now we've got everybody gearing up for the mystery. They're really excited and they will be sharing their units, their um, discoveries on, on what worked best for them, the colors that they're working with. If they have questions on a step, there will be another member who can help them because I can't possibly answer all of the steps all the time. I do the best that I can. It's a real community. We've got a bunch of wonderful people who've been there for the beginning. I have two moderators I'd like to give a shout out to. One is to my friend Andy in Arizona, and the other to my friend Irene, who's in Kentucky. We are in, in uh, different parts of the U.S. All of us work full-time jobs. Um, Andy works as a, a deaf interpreter and, and does some moderating for me in between in her off hours. Irene is super, super busy. She not only has her own uh, long arm studio where she where she quilts for others, but she also works in a quilt shop. And in between everything, the three of us are trying to moderate what's going on this really, really large group. And so I, I couldn't do it without these two ladies. But the whole group is wonderful. So I hope that you will join us there because there'll be a lot of mystery fun happening as soon as everything goes live. We can already feel it just kind of burbling because the days are counting down until the colors come out. So... Um, Give that, a, give that a try. If you join, be sure that you check the files section because there's information there to help you deal with, wow, there's so many notifications. This is all in my newsfeed. How do I deal with this? And there's a way to set yourself on no notifications so that when you want to read the page, you just come to the page and you can turn your notifications off so that those are not pinging on your phone all day long. It's really fun. Okay, let's sew this here. And now I can sew the top to this pumpkin. Hooray. I'm, I'm very much a happy football widow because when football happens upstairs, <laughs> I come downstairs and I'm in my own domain. Alrighty, we're gonna just get this pumpkin out here. I love this fabric. It, it looks like knitted socks. Isn't that fun? I love the textures that fabric gives us. And while I, I have fun with solids, I've been sewing with solids my entire quilting life. I love the texture that printed fabrics give us. So this is really a fun one. Okay. Add that one there. And I can take this one out. Little pumpkins for my patch. Okay, gonna go to the top of the inbox here. Things are still coming in really quickly. Diana or Dinah Puckett says, ready to decide on some borders and get this one squared up. Oh wow, my dear. This is lovely. Check out this star. There's some paper pieced pineapple action going on in the center, but just look at that whole thing. This is gorgeous. So I can't wait to see what you do with it, Dinah. Fabulous. Fabulous. In fact, oh, I got to biggie size this even more because there are skulls in the center. Can you see that? Isn't this awesome? Boy, you have imagination, girlfriend. Really, really nice. 
I love sewing with Halloween fabric. It's just, just a real kick. Wanda says quilt cam time. Yay for 8 p.m. evening quilt cam. And she's in South Carolina, so she kind of agrees with me. I think that, you know, this is a, a whole new generation of quilt cam. Our evening one will happen earlier. And yes, I know it's going to make that really early for some of you that are in, in California or perhaps Hawaii or Alaska. But it's always in the archives. So it doesn't really matter when it is, right? You, when you come onto Facebook, if we've ended, it's still gonna be at the top of my Quiltville page. So you'll be able to find it. And it will be archived in YouTube. So you'll be able to find it. And it's gonna make life a lot easier for me. Summer months, we may go back to the 9 p.m. one. But during winter, I think 8 p.m. is better. Okay. I asked the, just the other day, when is our time change? When is our time change? I love it and I hate it. I love the extra hour of sleep in fall back an hour. I hate that it gets dark so early. Donna says, greetings from Iowa. I'm working on my first Hexies project. My grandmother's flower garden, a very small garden <laughs> thus far. I'm wondering what is your favorite color palette? <laughs> this is really funny because somebody asked me once, what is your favorite color pa uh, palette? Scrappy! It's, it's actually, um, I don't have a favorite color palette, but I love a lot of variety and I love a lot of contrast. So the light versus the dark, you know, the, the, the scrappiness. I don't have a, a, a favorite color palette, but I would say that I probably have more blue in my stash than anything. And I haven't made any blue quilts lately. So I noticed a lot of favorite pieces that are just sitting there. And I think, I think there's gonna be some blue sewing in my very near future, maybe um, after I get the pumpkins done or something. Um, blue. I love it. Love it. In fact, we haven't done a blue mystery, so it, it was too late for this year. Whoops. Did I just say that? <laughs> but, but you know, maybe next year. Who knows? Hillary Burke says, Halloween ladies. These two ladies stay up all year round. I love how gorgeous they are, and they make me smile. Thanks for all you do. Will you be going to Houston Quilt Market? Yes, I'll be at market only, not for festival, because I fly back on, on um, November 1st. I've got too much going on, um, but I will be at, at market. You'll find me in the CNT Publishing booth. You'll find me in the United Notions booth. You'll likely find me from time to time over at the Craft Optics booth and wandering around to, to try to locate my other friends that are at other booths all over the place. So um, just be looking for me. If you're going to be at market, I would, I would love a hello. I would love to, to meet you in person and uh, give you a quilty hug. Here's her two Halloween ladies. They do make me smile. Look at these kissy faces. Aren't those just great? They're gorgeous. You're right. I'd keep these up all year long too. You know, they look like two, two Florida ladies who spent too much time with the self-tanning lotion. <laughs> gorgeous. Gorgeous. So much fun. Okay, whoops, clicked the clicked the, the wrong thing. I clicked Weather Channel, not Gmail. All righty. Judy Crumpler says cards. Oh, well, thank you, Judy Crumpler, if you're reading this. She says she ordered four cards total. There was only one deck in the order, and that's highly likely. That was probably me filling way too fast. We will get that out to you, Judy. And here is... Jeanette in sunny St. Augustine, Florida, who says, now to sew together, oversized mug rug for work. Oh, that is super cute. I'm going to biggie it here so that people can see what's going on in your hexes. So she's doing some hexes for a mug rug, and there's a little hootie owl in the way center. That's going to be really cute for a mug rug. So, all right, folks. Well, guess what? We are uh, an hour and 10 minutes <laughs> into quilt cam and I think this is where I am I'm going to call it um stop for the day we will do this again looking forward to the 25th 8 p.m eastern if that sounds good for you be watching on Facebook be watching on the blog if there's a change in my schedule I'll let you know um quilt cam times are not set in stone they have to fit in life so I don't schedule them on an every Friday or every other Saturday um time frame i love the afternoon time frame on a weekend because it enables those who are in european countries to join in i like an evening time frame it allows those who are in australia to join us in their morning time um, and who knows now that this is on my mobile uh, tablet we may have impromptu quilt cam 
I'm thinking even during workshops. Wouldn't that be great if I had a great Wi-Fi connection during one of my workshops that I could do kind of like a little interview the quilters in the workshop kind of a thing. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, anyway, um, this is Bonnie Hunter from The Basement at Quiltville wishing you all a wonderful Sunday wherever you are. If you're still in the mood to keep sewing, you don't have to stop just because I'm turning off the camera. Please keep going. Most of all, enjoy your day. Find something good in every day to focus on. You know, it really is true. The things that you focus on are the things that you find. We'll see you next time live from the basement. Bye-bye, everybody. This is where you watch me try to find the off button. I'll turn it off. Okay? Okay.